Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about a part two for advice for furloughed medical coders. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so uh, I wanna make this very clear first and I'm gonna keep saying it throughout the video because I've gotten many comments on the last video that I did about this. Now I originally did an advice for furloughed medical coders a few weeks ago, right? Uh, because there was a large company that laid off a lot of people, they furloughed a lot of people because there's something going on in their company. Now I will say this, furloughs can happen in any industry. This is not geared just towards medical coding or health information or medical billing or any of those things. It can happen to any industry. Look at the airline industry, okay? <laughs> so there's a lot of different companies that are vulnerable to this because sometimes when you have leadership issues at the top, it all trickles down, right? And sometimes if there's a negotiation thing going on with furloughed workers, that's also part of the deal too. So there's a lot of reasons that furloughs can happen. But if you think that this is just something, oh, it's all medical code. No, 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 no. Okay. This can happen to anybody. This is not a usual occurrence. There are some medical coders who go their entire careers and this never happens to them. I have had it happen to me three times. When you survive the first one, <laughs> you learn really quick about what you need to do to survive the other two or you know whatever. And so you have to anticipate these things. It's not something to panic about. It's not something to, oh, give up the whole career field for because again, it doesn't always happen. And as I said, um, in that video, this is not a usual occurrence, but it does happen. You can be in any industry and it can still happen, okay? So with that said, don't panic. And that was the first thing that I said in that video too was don't panic. And then people didn't hear me when I said it. Um, so I had gotten many emails after about that. You know, oh, is this something that always happens? Is this a usual occurrence? No, it is not a usual occurrence. But the thing that I want to talk about today is how do you get through that time if you are furloughed, if you do happen to run up against this and you are a medical coder. So it really all depends on how long the furlough is going to last. Sometimes it depends on who's negotiating or what's going on at the top. That's how long it can last. Um, it can be quite a few weeks. It can be just a couple of weeks. So it really all depends on what's going on behind the scenes. The thing that I recommend though, if you know that you're going to get furloughed, if they give you your papers, you need to make sure that you have these papers on hand and that you have them with you, okay? Because this is going to be your backup. <laughs> um, because this is how you're going to be able to get your bills taken care of for some time. Sometimes uh, with certain companies and they know you've been furloughed, they will either move a payment to the end of your contract or they'll, you know, delay your payment or whatever or however they work it out. Sometimes with like your vehicle payments. Um, when it happened to me, I had to have a vehicle payment moved to the end of my contract, but that was okay because I was able to manage my money elsewhere. And so that's what you do. When you get furloughed, the first thing that you need to do is make a list of all of your bills so that you know what you need to pay and what is absolutely you know, necessary and what is not necessary. And then you start cutting all the things that are unnecessary like all of these streaming <laughs> um, streaming apps and things like that that you really don't need. Uh, cable, you can cut that out for a little while just until you can get through this furlough, okay? Because right now at the beginning of the furlough, you're all about trying to save as much money and try to pinpoint how much money you actually need to make in order to be able to sustain yourself. There's a lot of people that talk about well, you need to have a savings. You should have a savings. You should have three months worth of expenses or six months worth of expenses. Yes, ideally you would have that, but there's a lot of people that live paycheck to paycheck who are not able to do that, okay? So with that said, and with that in mind, you have to think of other creative ways in order to gain money. And I don't talk about this on my channel because of the simple fact that that's not what this is. This is not one of those ones where, oh yeah, you gotta do this and you gotta do that. 
I'm, I'm not about that on this channel. Um, I am about medical coding, but I think that it's important for coders to know that there are options out there for them. So when you have um, any kind of talent, maybe you came over from the billing side and you remember a lot of things about billing and maybe you, um, you know all the processes and stuff like that. Well, you know, there's people who are studying for their billing certifications or maybe they are billers and they need help um, because they need somebody to tutor them on, you know, what's the deal here? What's the deal here? You can always do tutoring, uh, for something like that. So that's always an option that you have. If you came over from the billing side and you need to make some money because you've been furloughed, you can do that. If you've been a transcriptionist, there are still transcriptionist jobs out there. Maybe it's not with medical, but it may be with other things. So that's something else that you can look into. There's a lot of different websites about the transcription thing. <laughs> um, don't ask me, <laughs> just let your fingers do the walking, uh, but you see them all the time. So that's something that you can use as an alternative to be able to bring some money in temporarily to kind of help you get through that time. During furloughs, you're not paid. That's the big problem. And a lot of people, again, they start panicking because they don't have money for their bills. And instead of just stopping for just a second, adding up how much they're spending or what they need to spend, right? The rent or in their vehicle payments, insurance or whatever. And so that way you can make sure that you can raise this money. Then you got to get on the phone and you got to start talking to these people. Okay. You got to let them know, Hey, I was furloughed but uh, we don't have a, an anticipated date for us to go back to work yet, but here's my situation. And so a lot of times these companies, they have little things for when these things do happen and you can prove it obviously. And that way you can have your proof and show them again. Like that's why I say, get your papers. So that way it says, you know, when the furlough started and you know, when you expect to get ready to go back to work and that kind of thing. So that's something that you should be prepared for, okay? And in any industry, you should always be prepared uh, in case something happens. Um, I have lived in a city before where there was a popular restaurant. And this restaurant was so big in, in my hometown. And all of a sudden, one day, it just closed down. Overnight, it just closed down. And so all of those workers were out of work. They are restaurant workers that were immediately out of work. So what did they do? There was a outcry in the community to help them. So there was other, um, other businesses that would pick them up to, you know, get them a job and things like that. So sometimes that can happen in your community. It depends if there's like a lot of people that are impacted, but if it's not, then you need to, again, look for those alternatives for being able to bring money in for just a temporary amount of time. You can go to your local temp agency, uh, not the ones that are online <laughs> because they're like staffing agencies and they're usually headhunters that are looking for particular sets of skills and things like that. And that's not what you want. At the time, you just want to be able to work and bring money in. Now, what you work and bring money in temporarily may not be what you're used to, may not be a lot of money, but it is some money. So that's where you have to kind of humble yourself. When I was looking for a job, when I was a brand new medical coder, I was um, looking for two months very hard. <laughs> I was applying everywhere. I was just doing the best that I could. I was working three jobs. I worked at a halfway house uh, where I was helping people who needed help, right? They, they couldn't live on their own, but they still needed somebody to help them. So it was still a difficult and physically demanding job. I worked at a, um, I worked as a bartender. I cleaned houses. I did all of those things because I knew that this was just going to be a temporary time and any fatigue that I felt, which I felt a lot of fatigue because I was working seven days a week, just trying to get through this time and getting all this money together so that I could, <laughs> uh, make it. And that was what I was trying to do. And when you are like that, when you're willing to humble yourself and work anywhere, you know, if you're able-bodied, you can work anywhere, do anything, then go for it because it may not be what you want to do. And you may think, well, no, I went to school and I shouldn't have to. That's a, um, a defeated mentality because yes, you went to school, but this is something, this is a challenge that life is throwing at you. And what are you going to do? 
Are you just going to sit there and just cry and whine about not being able to make it? You know, that's the thing about my channel too. I will not allow my audience to feel sorry for themselves. I see that a lot in the comments sometimes when people want to sit there and feel sorry for themselves and I stop that immediately. You're not going to do that here because feeling sorry for yourself does nothing. It does not help you. It does not propel you forward and it does not, um, it blocks that creativity in order for you to think of different ways to help yourself. There's people all the time, you see them on, on Instagram, or at least I do, <laughs> uh, because I think Instagram knows I'm an entrepreneur and that it gives me all these other entrepreneurs to look at. And it's very inspiring because they took something and made it their business now. And so there's people who make and sell cookies. They go to the farmer's market and, you know, they do all these things and that's how they make their money. You know, and sometimes they say, oh, I started really small and it was little things, but I was able to make money and get some money coming in. It's the same thing that you have to do. You have to think of different ways to bring money in. And especially when it's just a temporary time. So that way you don't panic. And I think that's why, you know, as, as time goes on and it happened to me two more times after the first time it happened. I didn't panic. And I didn't panic on the first time either, but I didn't, I really didn't panic the second and third time it happened because of the simple fact that it's like, you know, okay, fine. I just got to work through this time and I've got to be able to shuffle here, shuffle there. And that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what you can do as well. So it's about being creative enough to have that readiness. And I think that when people immediately something happens and they know they have no money coming in, they want to wallow in that and they're like, oh no, I don't have no money coming in. What else can you do? What other things can you do? Can you go to a temp agency and get a day job? Of course you can. can you can do that. Um, can you stock shelves? Absolutely. Can you hang up clothes? Absolutely. Those are different things that are always hiring all the time. You go to the department stores, they're always looking for people to hang up clothes, okay? <laughs> uh, I've always wanted to do that as like a job, you know, just to go and hang up the clothes at the, at the mall or the stores or whatever, but I never did, <laughs> you know, but hey, you know, but that's the thing, guys, you can do things like that. There's a lot of things that sometimes I think people don't think about. And it's not just because you are doing something else like this, these little side jobs, that you're abandoning your medical coding career. Quite the contrary. Um, you can always put a pause on that and you can still be applying while you're working these other jobs while you're on this furlough. Because you don't know how soon they're gonna call you back, but you still need to bring money in, okay? So don't waste your time waiting on a company that furloughed you, all right? You want to direct your energy. Okay, I got to make this money. I've got to be able to figure this out and we can get this figured out. Absolutely, because people figure these things out all the time. So think about what your talents are, what your skills are, and then start looking at ways to monetize those talents. Okay, that's what you have to do. Um, go to the temporary agencies in your local area. You want a desk job, tell them you need a desk job. If you say, well, I can stock shelves, I can do that kind of thing, do that, okay? Those are ways of just temporarily making some money and getting some money to come in. That's all, all right? And that workplace that furloughed you is not the only workplace out there, okay? There are other places that you can work. So just keep that in mind. And I, I when I was first got these messages from these people, they were worried about that. Like, who else is going to hire me? You know, they, I've only been there two, three months and, you know, it doesn't look bad on my resume. You can put on your resume that you were furloughed as of. That's not in your control, okay? You didn't get fired, <laughs> okay? And even if you did, um, you just, you're going to take that experience from there and then you're going to say that, you know, whatever, whatever reason um, that you're continuing to, continue your search looking for a medical coding job, all right? But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that if you were let go, okay, if you were fired and you were let go from that job and, you know, they say, well, hey, you know, we're furloughing some workers, but we don't want you back. You know, of course it's gonna sting a little bit, but then you need to look at why are they letting you go? Are they letting you go because your accuracy was low? 
If your accuracy was low, that is totally in your control. How? Because you can do your studies. You can go back to those workbooks and you can start working through the medical coding. All right. If you have the CPC study guide, which even if you are with the HEMA, <laughs> you have the CPC study guide. That's a fantastic book that covers a lot and it gives you the answers to all of the questions, which is fabulous because I hate it when they only give you the odd number <laughs> answers and then you have to figure out the rest. I don't like that. Okay. That's why I buy the book so that it has all the answers. The ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS coding handbook with the answers is also fabulous too. Even if you don't study for the ICD-10 PCS side, you can certainly uh, practice with the ICD-10 CM side. So do that. So that way you can ready yourself for the next opportunity. And just because, you know, you may have not done well at this job, maybe it was too much pressure, or maybe there was so much on the uh, production and you felt nervous and that's why you were rushing through. You want to make sure that this next time when you get out there and you get that next job, that you're going to be even more prepared. And that's something that maybe this furlough was a blessing for you. So that way you can focus your energy and your time on something else. All right. And so that way that you can concentrate on getting better with the coding, because I see a lot of coders that they make mistakes that are unnecessary. I see unnecessary mistakes and it's just like, these are basic one-on-one coding questions. You shouldn't be making these mistakes at all. These are guidelines, <laughs> guideline entries specific, and you're still making these mistakes ridiculous. Okay. So that's why I say use this time while you're furloughed to be able to um, do more of your studies because you have the time. Go out there and find those temp jobs, okay? And collect as much money as you can. Look at your talents, okay? If you were uh, a medical biller, if you were a, uh, a pharma tech, right? And you got into medical coding after pharma, okay, well then you want to say, okay, well, I can do tutoring if you're going to be, if that's what you're going to do, pharma tech, right? You can totally do that. And see, that's another way that you can get some more money coming in. If you are really good with math, they need math tutors all the time. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, I see it all the time where students are struggling with math, not math and coding. Okay. So relax, like high school math, like algebra and all that other stuff. If you know that stuff, then by all means, you know, make yourself a tutor. So that way you can start offering that. And then you can start getting some money coming in because again, that's just what's going to help you kind of float through this time. And, and as I said, we'll say again, this does not happen often, but when it does, this is how you prepare yourself. You look at all of your bills and you eliminate everything that you need to eliminate. And then you look at your core bills that you have to make the money for that. And then you set about trying to figure out ways to be able to collect that money so that you can pay those bills and you can pay yourself a little something extra. And if you don't have a savings, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. All right. Most people don't live with the savings. Okay. And so, um, that's why you have to be willing to work. And again, I don't worry anymore about anything because I can work. I work and I don't mind working. I don't mind cleaning houses. I don't mind doing any of those other things that I used to do, bartending. Bartending and I have to remember some of those recipes again, <laughs> but for the most part, I can open up a bottle of beer. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I, I have done and I can do and I'll do it again if I have to. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye to do those things, but that's just part of life guys. Okay. So whatever you do, hopefully you take away this, this simple message. It does not layoffs and furloughs. Well, the furloughs, mostly the furloughs do not happen all the time. Layoffs. It depends on the company. Okay. It really does depend on the company. If you are with a newer company, yeah, I would kind of worry about that. <laughs> but if you are with an established company, I would not worry as much with an established company because established companies have had, you know, their time in and things like that. So, um, it's a little bit more different for them. Most of the times something like this is going to be the furlough. 
And believe it or not, guys, these these uh, credit card companies, these um, these vehicle, uh, what is it, the financiers for the vehicles, they understand these things do happen, you know. And so, but you just have to talk to them, and of course, have your paperwork so that you can show them. If you want to apply for unemployment insurance or whatever they call it in your area, here we call it unemployment insurance. Um, if you want to apply for that, you can. When it happened to me, I didn't apply for it because, again, I know that I can work and I can do things in order to make money. Uh, so I wasn't about to go and fill out all the paperwork and do all that because it takes a while. Sometimes it takes like six weeks uh, just to get your first check. And yes, while they most of the time they do um, put it back to when you first did it, it's no guarantee that you'll get the unemployment insurance either, okay? Depending on how long you've been with the company and that kind of thing. So that's just something that you have to be aware of. Uh, yes, it is a benefit, but it doesn't always apply in every situation, you know? But don't waste time, you know, getting upset because, you know, you got furloughed or, you know, whatever the case may be. Don't waste your time on that start focusing on what you what, what you need to do which is get money coming in and get that uh goal of looking for another job because they're again this these companies that furloughed these people is a big company but they're not the only company in town i mean there's there's tons of other places and a lot of times new medical coders neglect the fact that um, nursing homes need coders urgent cares need coders uh, let's see where else uh, dialysis centers they need coders so these are all places that you can also apply okay um, and uh, the pathology centers they also need coders as well so that's something that you can um, look at and not just pigeonhole yourself into just a coding position because sometimes they're called medical records technicians sometimes they're called um, uh, health information technicians sometimes they call them that and they're not asking for the degree they're asking for a coder I've seen that sometimes they're called revenue cycle technicians what is revenue cycle <laughs> you know a revenue cycle is something different from coding but it's all under the same umbrella so maybe that's why they say it that way um, so look for different options when you're out there and not just coder 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 um, and if you're trying to just focus on getting that remote coding. Uh, I've seen posts lately on LinkedIn that are driving me nuts because they are saying, oh, well, I'm looking for a, a coding position and no one wants to hire me because I don't have experience, but I, I, want a, I want a remote coding job. You haven't earned it yet. To be honest, you haven't earned it yet. And the employers are going to want um, established coders because of the simple fact that when it comes to remote medical coding, it's so much different to be by yourself and be brand new and then trying to learn the electronic health record. And you learn the coding in the school, but you didn't learn about the electronic health record and it's something completely different. And that's even more because now you're going to be running back and forth to your lead or your coding manager or the HIM manager and then asking them questions. They have a job to do. That's why they don't want to hire new people to work at home right away. Okay. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but um, it's just, it's getting more and more harder because again, more people are going back, you know, so it really all depends. But if you're going to be stubborn about insisting on working from home, then you go right ahead, but you're going to be in for an uphill battle. All right. And when you start sharing that uphill battle with everybody else, keep this in mind. There's a lot of people that are watching. And especially if you do it on LinkedIn, that is the worst place to do it. Because trust me, all the people that I see complaining right now, oh, I have them blocked on my LinkedIn because I get tired of hearing them go on and on and on because they're not trying to help themselves. Okay. Help yourself and take that step of even just working around other coders, even just temporarily. Okay. So again, while you're on this furlough, Try to find a place that will hire you. Do not work for free, okay? Just saying. So with that said, best of luck to you guys. A furlough is just temporary. It will pass. You will make it out of this okay. You can do this. 
You can find ways of making money and you will be okay. Your family will be okay. And all of these things that you're looking at, you need to be realistic, okay? And just go down to the uh, very, very necessities that you need. And then you'll be able to get everything else that you had, all these luxuries that you had. You'll be able to get them back later. But right now is the important time that you pay attention to what you absolutely need. And that's just my advice anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.